actually the doctors were saying to us, don't love him because he's going to die. You know, it's better if you don't love him so much. And it's like, how can you tell me this? You know, I'm not going to love him less because he's going to die. I will probably love him a lot and then he will die, you know. And for me, hope never ended, you know, and, and I always fight. I was always fighting for him. Florencia. Um, I'm 44 years old and I was born in Uruguay and then I started to to travel the world a little bit. I lived in Italy, in Brazil, in Mallorca and finally I came here 20 years ago. In 2016 um, I found this space, this place. Uh, it was a land uh, nobody had been working here for like 20 years and um, and I was looking for a place in in the countryside because my son was born with a brain disease and we needed a space to for him to develop in, a, in nature I wanted to, him to to grow up in a more natural space than in an apartment and also I was looking for uh, a land to create a rehabilitation center for children with disabilities. So I found this amazing place with beautiful views to La Gomera and to Teide. When I came here um, to live in this uh, finca after like eight months that the people were refurbishing the house, I was um, my, my, the interest in, in eco building, like starting in like to 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 raise like uh, uh, in myself like an interest in eco building because I felt that uh, there are so many things to recycle that we can um, we can take from also from nature to to create our own houses. So uh, I went to a course to create a, a, an oven. So the first thing that I learned was how to make an oven. This house was made like in a year and a half. It took around a year and a half, uh, but not because you make it in one year and a half. If you have help, maybe you can make it in less time. But the thing was that we were working with friends, volunteers, and it took a little bit longer. So we made a mix of cob, of earth, here in this land, the land is very dry. So the, the earth that we took from the floor, we had to dig, excavate, get the stones out. So we were like sifting the, the earth. Then we were mixing this earth with sand, straw and water. So we also used uh, bottles to allow the light go inside and it's very beautiful because every bottle has a different color so you see the light inside with different colors. I've been working super hard for five years also raising my child alone. Uh, he, his father is here, he supports me also but uh, the first five and a half years have been uh, mostly myself who, ha who was taking care of him. And he also went through six surgeries, uh, four su brain surgeries, where they took half of the, of the brain out because he had epilepsy from birth. And uh, the, the seizures were very strong and they could also damage the healthy side of his brain. So he was affected, uh, very affected and right now he has an 85% of disability. Uh, he is affected all on the right side of his body. Uh, he has a strabic eye, so the eye goes to the side. Uh, he has half a vision on each eye. He also has affected his arm, so he cannot really move the arm. And also his leg. So he also needs uh, a lot of orthotics to support him in his daily life. So here we have like a, 
our little production of bananas and we have um, we sell them to friends we sell them sometimes to to clients that come to stay with us and uh, it takes like six months to to become yellow to be able to eat them we also have more fruits and vegetables uh, planted in the in the gardens and this is a uh, passion fruit it's called maracuya passion fruit in spanish it's also called parchita and it has a super beautiful flower and in spanish we also say that it's the crown of jesus christ and here is the the passion fruit is growing now this will become yellow we have two varieties here we have the yellow and the red variety yeah. This uh, house um, was, we also made the foundation and the floor and then we put uh, three pallets. So here we have like, let's say one, two and three. And then it was like double height. So we have six pallets here, six pallets here, and then uh, four and a half or maybe five here, and also at the front. So we were cutting the pallets at the end where we wanted the, the wall to stop, let's say. And then we also had, for example, here you see that there is some wood. It's like an extra piece to hold the two pallets together or to hold the cob because once you put the pallet, you can refill it with cob or you can refill it with um, with straw. But we wanted to make it more bioclimatic. So we filled it with cob. So the cob was coming out. So we had to put net and then we started going up with the net. So to hold the cob, not co going out of the pallet, we had to put some pieces of wood. So then this was holding the net plus the cob. And then uh, we went up with the cob. So you see the width of the, of, the, of the wall is like around 15 centimeters here, maybe more at the bottom. Like I said, in the other house, it's more difficult. It's always less difficult to make the foundation and make the first layer. And then the second part is always going to be a little bit thinner because you cannot put so much quantity of cob uh, because it falls. Um, then we, once uh, the pallet was like to up to here, what we did for the top part was we also put some pieces of wood and some net. And this is like in the air. It was like created in the air, let's say. So it was cob uh, filled inside this, uh, this structure made with, with chicken net. In the first place, I had a room, so I had like a shared dorm and people were staying there, but then we created the he first house. So this house was uh, used for this purpose. So we were doing a uh, holiday rent in this little house. And then uh, we started to create more houses, to, to build more houses. So new people, new volunteers were coming, friends were coming also to give a hand. And little by little, with the support of volunteers, with the support of well, you know, making this a little money from the holiday rent and uh, also I make breakfast, I make uh, soaps, uh, organic soaps and, and artisan um, oils and uh, jam. So <laughs> I was selling all these uh, products to, uh, to our guests and they really appreciate it because they know the story behind this. And I also became a yoga teacher. I, train, uh, I did a training course to become a yoga teacher. So I also uh, give classes to the clients and also sometimes to, to people that ask me to, to do classes. And I'm also a professional dancer. So I, all this little money that is coming in is supporting me to, to create the project. So this is our outdoor kitchen. It was also made with the uh, with the principles of cob building so we created a space here for eating with a, a stone bench this is the cob oven where you can make pizza and bread 
we also make made a barbecue and here we have all the the cutlery and everything for the for the guests and also for ourselves to to cook so here we have the hobbit house once we did the first two houses this was like the third project my idea at the beginning was to make it in the ground i wanted to make it like at least half a meter under theirs but when we started excavating we excavated by hand it was super hard because here we are in a volcanic island and of course this is volcanic stones <laughs> so it was super hard to break the stones by hand of course so this house is probably the cheapest one <laughs> because uh, we tried to recycle as much you know as we could and also for example this material was from a pergola that broke uh, when the strong winds came there was a, like a hurricane here so we were like cutting and and replacing and also uh, using materials that uh, we had from previous works for example and then here i tried to do like a fibonacci fibonacci sequence uh, with the bottles and this is um, this is the the part the the glass part of the washing machine <laughs> to make a little window for me it was really hard to 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 create all this at the same time taking my son to hospital we were going to Barcelona every now and then because he was treated in Barcelona in one of the best hospitals of Spain which is San Juan de Dios uh, it's a very very uh, good hospital for children and at the same time I had to work also so to start like uh, with the project, I used my own savings to refurbish the whole house. I hired the builders, but then once um, they finished with the building work and also my money was finishing, I started to work by myself and I, um, I heard that uh, there was a program that is called Work Away or woofing or these volunteering programs where people come to to volunteer in your in your house and you give them accommodation and meals or different exchanges so now we're going to the kindergarten alexander goes to to a school normal school and in this school they have a special class for children with disabilities Well, I didn't know that my child was going to be a child with special needs because when they tell you that your child has an illness, you don't know to what extent this will take you. Uh, he was already five days old when he went into a hospital and I stayed in a hospital for eight months. So it was not really something that uh, is told to you in one second and then you imagine the rest of your life you know i was told that my son was probably going to die in the next five days but he didn't die so the process was very long and i was in a hospital the whole day long so i didn't even really have so much time to think about it i was just fighting for his life Alexander is a child that is amazing, is super full of life, energy and light. He makes everyone laugh and he's super kind. Uh, he takes care of, of you. He's uh, always trying to make you smile. So from what the doctors told me that he was not going to be able to speak or to, he was going to be like a vegetable. He developed so many abilities. It's amazing. He can walk now, he doesn't walk so, with so much stability because his right side is affected. But um, he walks, he swims, he talks a little bit and he can even make jokes. And now he's also learning to, to lie, you know, so <laughs> yes. So this means that he has the intelligence to do this, you know, so 
he has a great memory and this is amazing also because he only has the right side of his brain. Alexander ya puede bañarse. No, mamá, va en el brazo. No, mamá. Mira, la cabeza es mía. I try to be happy every day. I get up and I'm super positive and I try to put all my energy and I smile to everything and to, to everyone. But I always have like a little pinch in my heart, heart you know, to, that I don't know how much my, my son will live. And this was a big subject for me, the lifespan of, of a child with uh, this illness. Uh, so when he was only two months old, I was in, in ICU, in intensive care, for all this time. And I didn't have any information from my doctors here in Tenerife, um, because this is a very strange, it's like a rare disease. It's qualificated between the rare diseases. And there is not so much studies about this or literacy, so people don't know much about this, you know. The best outcome for children with uh, with catastrophic epilepsy, which is how this epilepsy is called, um, is a surgery called hemispherectomy. And this hemispherectomy, what it, it does is it it uh, it you have to have an electroencephalogram, and then they they find the focus of epilepsy and through surgery they take this part of the brain out okay so i started to see the outcome of these children was that they were affected on the other side of the brain that was affected so at the beginning for me it was like a shocking super shocking to see that my child was going to be so disabled you know and this was the best outcome <laughs> Being disabled was the best. The other, you know, the other option was to die. So, so I had to say, okay, you know, my son is my son, and it doesn't matter. He's my son. I love him. Whatever, you know, whatever comes comes. You know, I cannot uh, go against. But it will come. You know, I have to just be with him and support him, and and that's it. Um. <laughs> At some point, uh, for me, it was a little frustrating that I was not able with my own money, you know, with my savings, I was not able to create the place that I wanted here, to create all this accessible accessibility for all these children to be here, for all these parents to be here, for me. It was sad, you know, to have put so much effort in these five, six years to not be able to, to give this freedom to the parents, this possibility to the kids to, to have these therapies in this space. So if there is anybody willing to help, I'm super happy. On the other hand, I also feel and if you allow me to say this three years ago uh, Alexander was still having epilepsy and after three surgeries I couldn't believe that this was still happening so we went for a third fourth surgery and at this point I think I collapsed a little bit emotionally and this is when I started to to do yoga and to look for like maybe not an answer but maybe some support in my spiritual side so i started to connect a little bit more with with the yoga philosophy and it's not because i want to sell anything to do with yoga but i started to understand things from life i started to maybe feel that um, through through holistic therapies also there was a way you know to understand what was happening to us. And nowadays, I am like uh, very open to create a holistic space, 
So this, this place in the first moment, from the first moment, was created to help people. Having a peaceful life where full of joy and a stable health. This is the most important for me. Mm -hmm.